All right, good day learners. Up to this point in time, we've been focusing on cash transactions, where we would buy and sell things, items, but everything was for cash. Now in the business world, a large amount of transactions takes place on credit. Now what we mean by credit is on account. In other words, the person doesn't pay immediately, they pay later. So just looking at our working capital cycle, our normal uh, process would be to buy our stock. We would then have that in stock room, which we would then sell. We would sell the stock, get the cash, so the money comes back into the business's bank account. You would use that money, buy more stock, sell, and so the merry go goes, goes round. But in reality, a lot of the stock gets sold on credit, on account. And these people that we sell to, who owe us money, are called our debtors. They're an asset, they're a current asset, because we expect them to pay within a short period of time. That's why it's current. Remember, current asset is anything less than 30 days. Now, if your um, debtors then owe you the money, what happens is that it affects our cash flow. We would sell the goods here and we would then have an extra step come in. Now at this point in time, the stock will have gone, so you've lost your stock, but you haven't yet got the cash. And after 30 days or so, these debtors would then pay you, you'd get the cash, and then you could go and buy the goods. So the merry-go-round is extended. So we ask ourselves, well, why do people sell on credit, on account? And it is pretty much a norm today because a lot of people don't want to carry cash around with them. There is obviously credit cards that they could use, which we've already dealt with. But accounts are very common. And if you do not offer an account system, you could well lose out on the amount of um, sales that you have in your business. So what we need to do now in our recording, remember we're still very recording orientated at this stage, is we're going to have to adapt our system because we're going to have to record the fact that this goods have been sold on credit. So we can't use the cash receipts journal. So we are going to bring in over here a debtors journal. So you need to remember that debtors are people that owe you money. They are an asset. It's not that you own them. But theoretically, you own these goods that they've walked out the shop with until they pay, and then you'll own the cash. So we have a, a debtor's journal. We will then receive the cash, and then that will go back into our cash receipts journal, and we will then be able to buy our stock. So we're going to have to bring in a debtor's journal. But at times, the debtors will return the goods to us. And so we're going to have to bring in another thing called our debtors' allowances. Now, the word allowance, you're giving somebody an allowance, you're giving them a reduction. So if somebody returns the goods to the shop, we're not going to refund their money because they never paid us. So we will bring in these two extra journals, and we will also have to bring in accounts for our debtors because we're going to have to control who owes us which amount of money. Now, if goods are sold on credit, they're not going to put it through a till because remember, there's no cash involved. And so we're going to bring in a new document, which is called the invoice. Now, in modern day days, these will be produced by um, the computer. But into that invoice will be the name of the business that is selling, which in this case is Main Street Pharmacy, and the name of the person with the address, the account number, who they're selling to. Remember, it becomes important to know the person's name now because they, you're going to have to send them an account and a detail of what they owe. And then these invoices are then inserted into a debtor's journal. Now, a debtor's journal is, remember, the debtors are the people that owe us money, the document, who's the person, and just like we learned before, a sales and a cost of sales. If any of these debtors return any of the goods, we're not going to refund them because they still owe us the money. We will then issue them with a credit note. 
and you'll see where the name comes from now. Again, who are who's returning with their account number, very important, and what they're returning. And then that credit note will be summarized into a debtor's allowances journal. Again, the document, who's the person, and we're going to bring in a new thing called debtor's allowances. I'll show you when we get to sales. And of course, we still have our cost of sales. And again, I'll explain this in the ledger. So again, I'm taking an exercise. Um, for those of you that are working with my training material, it's activity 4.23. But again, if you don't have it, don't stress, you can just freeze the frame now and you will see all the entries on here and you can work off this uh, frozen frame on your computer. Right, we are going to enter the items into the debtors journal. Sorry, the debtors journal for when they sell, when we sell on credit, the debtors allowances if they return any goods and a cash receipts journal for when they do come and pay. And I'm going to focus just on the journals first. So if we have a look at the entries, we've got to decide now which of the journals they're going into. So we delivered stock on account to Wilcox. The stock had a cost price of that and the markup was 150% and an invoice number 26 was issued. Now, there's a couple of words here that will tell you that this is on credit. Edit. First of all, it, we, it's on account. Secondly, there's an invoice. So both of those will tell you that we're selling this on account. The fact that I'm delivering the stock, I must be selling. So that item is now going to go into our debtors journal. Now the document, you don't need to write the invoice because the heading is invoice, but otherwise you could write I-26, the date, it's Wilcox. And just read very carefully. This time they gave you the cost price. So the cost price is 460. Now remember, we always said that our cost price is 100%, and I have done a video link on this, but just a quick revision. Our profit this time is 150%. So we are going to sell this at the two added together, 250%. So you've got 460. That is equal to the cost price, so it's divided by 100. We want the selling price times 250 and again, please, you, we reinforced this when we did the cash receipts journal, that you need to be able to work out these cost of sales and sales figures. So my sales is 1150. Right, on the 4th, Jay Wilcox returned half the stock he bought on the 2nd July because he did not order it, and we issued him a credit note. Now he's returning to us. We sold him on account before, so we issue him a credit note. We are going to put that and summarize that into our creditors allowances journal. So it's credit note number 32. It's returning this on the 4th. It's T. Wilcox. Now it's half. So it's the original cost was 460. So half of it, the cost will be 230. And the selling price will be half of that. So that's 575. Half. Then on the 8th, cash sales for the day. Now this is back into your cash receipts journal. So I want you to do that one on your own for me now please. And then Renkin bought goods on account and the markup was 25% and then Renkin returned some of the stock on the 10th. So I want you to please freeze this frame if you don't have the exercise and I want you now to do those three entries for me. Right, so did you manage that? So the cash sales, remember in the cash receipts journal, they gave you the cash slips or cash register tapes. As I said to you before, you can write cash sales or cash or just sales. You can write customers if you wanted to. Remember the money must go into the analysis, into the till, and then you deposit into the bank. And you were given the sales and the cost of sales. No different from what we did before. And then if we just look on the 10th, we sold to Renkin. Now the invoices will run in order. On this case, they actually told you that uh, um, we issued the invoice or we sold the goods on account for 640. So that's the selling price. The markup is 25%. Please make sure that you're getting this. So that's 125%, and you're finding 100%. Always check yourself. The cost price must be lower. And then he returned the goods again. 30. The next credit note number. You return goods 
um, and we issued a credit note so the credit note will give the selling price and the same markup of 25%. If you're not getting these cost of sales figures correct please go back to the video in which I revise sales and cost of sales. Right now just going on that then um, on the 15th we issued an invoice to S. McKees for stock she purchased so if we're issuing an invoice it's going to be in your debtors journal. The invoice total, so the selling price was that. And just as a quick revision, remember this were um, the price code of educations. You've got to have a word that has got 10 letters with no letter repeated. The important thing is to note whether the first letter is a 1 or a 2. So this was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and naught, not 10. And they actually tell you that the cost code was D T N dot S S. So I'm sure you can all see now. The D is a two, the T is a six, the N is a nine. Full, that's the rands, and then naught naught. So right. So can you do that entry for me? And then I'm going to do the seventeenth with you. All right. So. There it is, please. I'm sure you didn't have a problem. They gave you the 595 and we've just worked out the 269. Right, now, T. Wilcox now sent us a check for 300 Rand in part payment. You are now receiving cash. So because you're receiving cash, we're going to go back to our cash receipts journal. Now, we need his name. We need proof that he's paid. So we issue him with a receipt this time. The date is the 17th. Who are we getting it from? We're getting it from T. Wilcox. They said he sent us a check. So that check will first go into your till, the 300 Rand. And now, this is we bring in a new column called the debtors control. This is to record the money received from your debtors. So that double entry will go into the debtors control. And then because it's the only entry, for the day, you then deposit it into the bank. Right, I want you to carry on and finish these entries for me and to total up, please. Just quickly, let's just look at number 18. On the 18th, S. McKees complained that she, <coughs> she'd been charged 595 instead of 559. So we overcharged her. Now we issued a credit note to correct this error. Now giving her a credit note is giving her a reduction in what she owes. We're giving her an allowance. So it will go into your debtor's allowances journal, but this time there will be no cost of sales. Remember your double entry for cost of sales was always trading stock. There's no stock being returned. All that we did is we overcharged, so we're giving her an allowance, a reduction. And so only a selling price entry in that case. Now carry on with the rest. All right, so let's just go over it. Um, in your cash receipts journal then, you had some more cash sales um, with the amounts going in the analysis and the sales and you were given the cost of sales. And then on the 27th, you were told that McKees pays you for the full amount that he owes. Now, at this stage, we should really have his ledger in front of us, but I haven't got to that point yet. So just let's going back. Remember that in the case of McKees, you were told that right at the beginning, McKees owed you 690 Rand. Then we were told that he then bought goods for us and he claimed a reduction, which was 559 that he owed us. So just remember, McKees owes us 690. He then bought goods over here for 595 Rand. And he said that it should only have been 559 Rand. So we gave him a reduction. So at this point, McKees owes us 690 and 559. Now I just want you to hold that. I'm going to show you the ledger where we should have got this information from. But as we're still busy with the journals, I'm telling you the amount is those two added together. And so therefore, McKees is owing you an amount of, amount, and then he's paying you 1249. Just hold it if you're not sure where that came from. Both of these were on the 27th, so we add it together and we get 2449. Remember that you deposit every day. The 1249 that McKees is paying 
will come off his debtors account. And then lastly, you will earn some interest, so it comes from the bank statement, and into sundry interest income. Once you add these up, remember to double check yourself that the bank is total is equal to the other columns where the amounts went into the bank. So if you look here, that 3,600 was in sales. The 300 was in debtors. Likewise with this debtors control, it's made up of sales and debtors, and then the 25. So your debtors control, your sales, and your sundry, if you add those three amounts, it must equal the 6375. We looked at this when we did cash receipts journals, so you must go and check yourself. The cost of sales is not included because these amounts did not go into the bank. And then if we just quickly look at our, um, our debtors journal, um, completing with Renkin and the cost price and you total it and the debtors allowances which we completed but we just need to total it. Right, I'm going to stop this series of lessons at this point. You need to go through other exercises where you go through these, ledger, uh, these journals until you know how to draw up these journals, that you're quite happy with when things go into the debtors journal and the debtors allowances journal. Once you're happy with that and you're totally familiar with it, you can then move into the next lesson in which I'm going to take the same exercise and I'm going to post it to the ledger. So keep practicing your journals.